What if you could walk around inside of your favorite TV homes? Well, now you can. Today we're going to get a tour of the country home from I Love Lucy, both in black and white, the way we remember it, and in its true colors. We'll also get to see Fred and Ethel's guest cottage. Hi, I'm Marina Coates. Welcome to Behind the Scenes, where we get up close and personal with all your favorite TV and movie homes. Today, we'll be touring the country home from I Love Lucy. We'll explore the living room, the dining room, the kitchen, the den, the bedroom, and even Fred and Ethel's little cottage. And we'll have Keith Thibodeau along for the ride who played Little Ricky. He'll be sharing fun memories and behind-the-scenes moments from the show. Let's get started. We'll begin with an overhead view to help us get our bearings. This is the entryway with the front door where most guests would enter. Over here is a closet and on this side is the den. The staircase was here and the fireplace here. On this side of the fireplace was a closet that we sometimes saw them hiding in and on this side, a large window seat. Next to that was the back door, which was really a side door that the Mertzes used. The living room was here in front of the fireplace with the dining area over here, and the kitchen and the laundry room here. As with all of the TV homes I've done, this home changed over the course of the series, so I had to pick a season and stick with it. I chose the later part of season six. The living room. We all fell in love with this country home the moment we entered it. I like to think of this home as comfort food. It just fills you up with its warmth and coziness, as satisfying as a heaping plate of chicken and dumplings. From the stunning architectural features to the gorgeous stone fireplace, this home has it all. And the country setting makes it all the better. Who wouldn't want to live here? The entrance has a step down into the main area. There's one by this door, too. This feature is very common in TV homes. The fireplace takes center stage, flanked by the staircase with its closet underneath here and a large window seat on this side. The stairs are interesting, too. They don't just come straight down, but instead jog first to the right and then back to the left as they descend. It sets the stage for some grand entrances, but also just looks great. Later on, I'll show you the views from the top of the stairs as part of the tour. In the episode, Lucy Gets Chummy with the Neighbors, Lucy goes on a spending spree and replaces their old furniture from their New York apartment with all new furnishings. Ricky had allotted her $500, but she winds up spending over $3,000. That would be more than $31,000 today. No wonder he was mad. The new sofa setup is unique in that it has two sofas back to back in front of the fireplace. Although most likely done for staging purposes, it adds a charming element to the room. The dining room. The dining room is over here just before the kitchen. The table and chairs were here with a china cabinet on this wall. In this scene, we catch just a glimpse of what was on that wall beyond the china cabinet. You can also see the end of the stage and some chicken wire that was put up to keep the chicks from escaping. Interesting side note, this oil and vinegar set would later turn up on Bonanza. Scenes that took place in the living room and dining room. Practicing the tango with a shirt full of eggs. A scene that has the longest recorded laugh from a live TV audience. Ethel grudgingly being forced to have lunch with Betty Ramsey and then becoming fast friends with her. And a money-making scheme involving hundreds of baby chicks that eventually has Lucy playing mother hen to get them to follow her. We'll tour just the living room and dining room for now. Later we'll tour the whole main floor. First, we'll see it the way we remember it best, in black and white, and then in its true colors. 
Set designers know what they're doing. Imagine this room without all of the wonderful architectural features. It simply wouldn't be near as enchanting. You can give your own home more character by adding interesting architectural features like these. We can learn a lot from set designers. I based this color tour on actual color photos of the living room and dining room set. Not colorized, but the actual real life colors. I have to admit, I was surprised by some of the colors. I'd pictured it differently in my head. It was fun to see what it was actually like on the set. Keith Thibodeau played little Ricky on the show. He was four when the show first started and nine by the time this series ended. He was already an accomplished drummer by age four and a half. I asked him about the audition, how he won the role. How that audition happened was a friend of my dad. He invited my dad to, to bring me to Desilu because he heard that there was auditions. They were looking to expand the part of Little Ricky and uh, get an older version of, of Little Ricky. So when I walked on the set, uh, I was confronted with Lucy. So Lucy looked, uh, looked me over and she said, well, well, he's cute, uh, Mr. Thibodeau, but what does he do? And my dad said, he plays the drums. So she, uh, she said, well, there's a set of drums on the other side of the, the, the stage there for the Desi, uh, Desi Arnaz Orchestra. Desi, Ricky Ricardo himself came over and started jamming with me on the, on the tom-tom. And he eventually stood up and laughed and said, I think we found little Ricky. The fourth wall. With many TV homes, we're not shown all four walls in a room. The missing wall is called the fourth wall. That's where the cameras and audience were. In Lucy and Ricky's country home, we were only shown to here on the main floor. On these tours, I always add all four walls so that it feels like a real home as we walk through it. In this instance, there was a very large space to fill. So to accomplish that task, I went to the experts. I studied blueprints of homes from that era to get a feel for what might have been on that fourth wall. Let's begin with the entrance to the den. In this image, you can see just a bit past the den door, so I included those things here. After that, I added a hallway with a door at the end that leads to the outside. Down that hallway, I included a storage room and a half bath here. When a home like this was originally built, there would most likely only have been a bathroom upstairs, if there was one at all. However, by the time the Ricardos bought it, there would most likely have been a room on the main floor that had been converted to a half bath, so I added one here. Next up on the fourth wall, I added another window seat. I got this idea from the floor plans of similar homes of the time. And after that is one of the entrances to the butler's pantry behind the kitchen, which was very common back then. But of course, that was my take on a possible fourth wall. I'd love to hear your ideas for what you would have put on that fourth wall. Tell me in the comments below. For now, sit back and enjoy the tour of the main floor, including that missing fourth wall. Later on, we'll tour the entire main floor. I'll be showing these tours in color. However, I'll put a link below that will take you to my website where you can see all of these tours in black and white. If you love exploring set design, you might like another show I have on this channel called Cinematically Inspired Design, where we take the design secrets from the cinema and bring them into our own homes. So your home can have the same magic. I'll walk you through the process step by step. It's easy once you know how. Set designers are not about following trends. Instead, it's all about the story. They use design to create a mood and tell us more about the family that lives there. All great design is personal. There's a reason so many of our favorite TV and movie homes have held up over the years and why we still love them. They're timeless. You could be using design the same way in your own home and have it be timeless. The way set designers do to create a mood and help tell your story. We tell stories through music. We tell stories through art. Why not design? 
There's a reason you fall in love with TV and movie homes. In my cinematically inspired design series here on this same YouTube channel, you'll find out why. The kitchen. I love this kitchen with its wood-burning stove, the oven built into the brick wall, a second set of stairs winding up to the top floor, a small eating area, and a laundry room just beyond. So fun. You'll notice that at times when someone entered the kitchen, we would see what looked like a washer and dryer here or some other appliance. But in actuality, you wouldn't see that from that view. They were tucked back here in a separate room. The reason this happens is that the set for the kitchen wasn't actually there at the time. One change that took place in the kitchen over the course of the series was this counter. At one point when it was the Lucy Desi comedy hour, it was L-shaped, but in season six of I Love Lucy, it looked like this. Once again, there was a fourth wall that we never got to see. I added a butler's pantry back here and a screened-in porch on this side. We'll tour the kitchen now and then head on to the den. The Den. In season six, we get our first good look at the den. And might I add, the perfect den. Every wall has wood paneling. There are two sets of built-in bookcases, a Dutch door, a writing desk underneath the large windows, a fireplace here, and a sofa and coffee table here, and a TV tucked up against the bookcase. We'll tour the den now and then we'll tour the entire main floor in one swoop. After that, it's on to the upstairs and then Fred and Ethel's little guest cottage. One of the most memorable scenes took place in the den, the episode with all of the baby chicks. I asked Keith if he remembered that day. I do remember that, and I loved animals. I was, I loved dogs. I loved any kind of animals. Yeah, they, they were so cute, and uh, I mean, just it was like mass chicken. You know, it was just crazy. You know, were they and, just um, all over the set? Running. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, they got, you know, some got away and there'd be a straight chick, straight chick somewhere. And so it, it was just uh, when they let them out, you know, you can't really contain them, really. Now we'll tour the entire main floor with all the doors open. What is it about this home and so many other TV homes that draws us in and makes us feel at home there? In a word, memories and good ones, too. We watched these shows when we were young, when maybe our lives seemed a little simpler, maybe the world seemed a little simpler. We got to know the characters, they became friends. In fact, it felt almost as if they were family. We shared memories, we shared laughter, we shared life with all its ups and downs. When we pulled up to the TV set, their living room somehow became an extension of our living room. 
It felt as though we had walked the halls of these homes. We knew them as intimately as we knew the characters. We laughed at the situations Lucy got herself into. Oliver's schemes. We related to both her mistakes and her mischief. Yet in a safe way. No matter what happened, we knew by the end of the show everything would get fixed. So we could just relax and enjoy the mayhem. And we could also enjoy the love that was shown. We got wrapped up in their lives almost as if they were real. We wanted them to be real. We wanted a life like that. Living in a wonderful home with loving friends and family, free of any real problems. The shows and homes and characters became a safe haven for us, like a warm blanket on a cold night. We know it's not a real world, but we sure wouldn't mind living in one like it. And we do, for a little while at least, every time we tune in. We relax and laugh, put the world on hold, and keep our troubles at bay. So the walls of these homes mean more to us than just a set on a stage, more than just props. These homes also house so many memories, so many good memories. Keith Thibodeau fills us in on what made the country home set so special. It felt like a real place too. So I think, I know I'm into set design, but it seemed like the set designers got it right to make it feel like when you sit down to TV, you're almost sitting down to a home, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was so cozy. The Connecticut house, it was, it was very, um, it was very Lucy-ish, you know, Lucy was from New England. She loved that whole, you know, change of the seasons thing. And I think she longed for the, you know, that kind of a thing, uh, a family picket fence. I think she dreamed of that with, with a husband that would, you know, would make her happy. And um, that was the way she did it through the show, you know. Now, just for fun, I really wanted to see what the view would be like from the upstairs looking down to the main floor. So we'll take a quick look at that before heading upstairs. Let's go upstairs now. We didn't get to see much of the upstairs, although when they first move in, Lucy mentions that there's a den upstairs. We never got to see it. We are given a look at the attic at one point, but mostly what we get to see is Lucy and Ricky's bedroom. And it doesn't disappoint. I love the windows above the beds. Notice that Lucy kept their bedroom furniture from their New York apartment. It has its own fireplace and a few doors that possibly lead to his and hers closets and a bathroom. We'll tour the bedroom now and then head on to Fred and Ethel's cottage. Keith shares some of his memories with the different cast members. Like Vivian, you know, Ethel, who yeah. played Ethel. She, I just remember, you know, passing by Lucy's dressing room or going in there for some reason and seeing just them just chatting like a bunch of two women in a, in a hair salon or something. I mean, it was just that kind of girl talk, you know. Yeah. And then, you know, Fred, William Frawley, I just remember um, him just being like going to the to the coffee uh, area and the donut area in the mornings. And, you know, first thing in the morning, he's, you know, he'll just look at me and say, how's the world treating you today, Keith? You know, how, how's how's things going today, Keith? And just just uh, that kind of thing. It was just a nice. It was a nice set when I was on it. Desi, of course, Ricky. Um, I have 
most memories of Lucy and Ricky, you know, because I've spent a lot of time at their home. But um, he was very, very good on the set and very much of a, uh, I guess, a calming factor for me, uh, being on the show that he helped calm me down. And because we, we did everything in front of a live audience. And that in itself was stressful because you had to, you had to, it was just like a play. You had to do everything as you remembered your lines and you had to hit your spots and you had to do this and sing your part and whatever. And um, he, he was very much helpful in that, you know, on the set. Coming up, a tour of the guest cottage. But if you want to see more of Keith's interview, including more memories from the show, just click on the link in the description below. The Guest House I love Fred and Ethel's cottage almost as much as I love the main home. There's a fireplace here and a window here with an archway in the back and stairs beyond that. We catch just a bit of the rest of the main room in this image from the show. What a lucky couple to get to live in this sweet cottage. I'm sure penny-pinching Fred was happy about that. We didn't get to see much of this place, but what we do see is divine. If you haven't seen it yet, I have already done a tour of Lucy and Ricky's New York apartment. I'll put a link to it in the description below. I'll also be doing their California suite in the future. What TV or movie home tours would you like to see next? Let me know in the comments. But as for today, that's a wrap. See you next time on Behind the Scenes.